because when we look at this, we know that we have the spine switch. Now, regarding that spine switch, I called that spine switch node 201, and we called it spine dash one. And we know that that spine was issued a VTEP address. Now at this particular juncture I'm not too overly concerned with that address. We just know that it got one. And we know that the spine is now part of that fabric that we just built. We also know that we have the two leaf switches. So in this instance I have leaf switch and in particular, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put the name in here. We called this one Spine 1. We called this one Spine 2. And I gave it a number of 1, actually this one will be Leaf 1, excuse me. We gave it a number of 101, and we know that it was issued a VTEP. Let's just go ahead and call this VTEP A. We'll call this one VTEP B. And we know that this device is also part of the fabric with leaf 2. So in this instance again we have leaf 2, we called it 102 and we know that it was issued a VTEP address and just for the sake of conversation we'll call that VTEP C. Now we know that traffic between leaf switches is going to travel across the fabric that we have created by taking these devices and actually implementing this concept of our fabric. And we also know that inside that fabric, our window that we use to access and configure everything is the APIC and we've been using that APIC in order to be able to do that configuration. That's APIC 1 and again we know that that device should be connected physically to a leaf on one interface and physically to another leaf on the second interface and we know that these are 10 gigabit I'm sorry Ethernet connections 10 gigabit Ethernet connections. We know the connections that are sharing or connecting my spines and my leaves are 40 gigabit QSFP plus connections. So again, QSFP plus 40 gigabit per second QSFP plus running between them. And that's for the most part pretty much everything that we have implemented to this point. Now there are some things that I still may find myself needing when it comes to how I'm going to operate and work with these devices because remember the APIC had a connection or has a connection into my out of band management, my OOB management VLAN. Now in my lab that address or that VLAN is 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Yes I know that's a huge range but I wanted a huge range because I actually use the third octet of a lot of the addressing space to correspond to where things are just to make things a little bit more human readable for myself. And we also are going to be able to manage this device, the APIC, because I issued the APIC an address out of the out-of-band VLAN range. In fact, it got an address of 10.1.255.252 slash 16. Now, that gives me the capability either through SSH or through the graphical user interface or any API or anything else that might be part of the TCP IP stack that's going to give me the ability to be able to connect to the APIC from any device that is in my OOB VLAN. However the problem with this is is that I may actually want to have the leaves accessible directly because right now as it stands if I want to communicate to a leaf or a spine I first have to connect to the APIC and then from the APIC what I do is I'm going to connect to one of these VTEP addresses and you guys have probably seen me do that with the SSH to leaf 
dash one command as an example, I could go to leaf two, I could go to spine one or to leaf one based on the way that things are implemented. So a lot of times I will want to make certain that if I had a management host sitting out here, so let's say I have a host, let's just say host uh, A sitting out here, and I wanted that host to be able to connect directly to either of my leaves or spines, what would end up happening is I'd actually want to be able to implement my SSH in such a fashion that I could connect to these devices but connect because I can actually physically connect these devices to my management VLAN. And I'll go ahead and just draw this one connected this way. But what I want to do is I want to be able to connect to the switches as devices, as entities, via SSH while bypassing the APIC. And the way that I do that is I'm going to actually assign an OOB network IP to each of these devices and the way that I'm going to implement that is it could be done via the command line or it could be done again via what we would implement as a policy. Now I'm going to pick the policy method because like I said that's where our primary focus is right now is on policy. It's also very very important to understand that sitting out here on my OOB VLAN I also have a number of virtual machine managers. Now a VMM, a virtual machine manager, corresponds to something like vCenter. In fact I have a several of these sitting out in our environment and what I need to do is I need to be able to use vCenter to actually communicate to a number of ESXi hosts that I have in my environment. In fact every student is going to have two ESXi hosts. Now that means that when we start looking at this configuration, a lot of my ESXi hosts will employ fully qualified domain names. So in other words, I would not necessarily be connecting to an IP address as much as I will find myself needing to connect to, say for instance, a URL. So like vcenter onemicronics dot com or actually dot local is what I use and I'll need to actually resolve that name so another thing that I'll find myself doing more often than not is creating and setting up some type of DNS functionality now the thing that you have to understand when you create and operate setting up DNS I have to set up DNS for the APIC and then I set up the DNS for my fabric other services that I may find myself needing would be things like network time protocol because remember we used security authentication and we use certificates in order to be able to make certain that our devices were able to set up that SSL connection for the purposes of making certain that the interfabric message service actually is able to do its thing. So NTP could possibly become a very important component in my infrastructure. Another component that we're going to find out that is going to probably be important to us, especially if we're going to connect to layer three external devices, is we're going to want to make certain that we enable MPB GP. And in order to be able to do that, what we're going to do, and I'll go ahead and pick another pin color here that will stand out, is, is we're going to form a BGP peering, MPBGP, between our devices, and everything is going to traverse the spine or multiple spines. So I will form adjacencies between leaves and spines. Leaves will not form direct adjacencies with one another. Spines will not form direct adjacencies with one another. In fact, the flavor of BGP that we're going to implement is going to be not just MP 
multi-protocol BGP, it is going to be an IBGP peering. And if you think back to the requirements of IBGP, remember IBGP requires us to make certain that we have a full mesh topology, but in a clause design we don't. So what we're going to find almost immediately is, is that we're going to need to create a configuration such that our spine is going to act as a route reflector. And again, the way that we're going to implement this route reflector configuration is going to be via policy. Now, this is not the end of it because ultimately what we have to admit is, is the fact that these devices, these leaf switches that we have configured, are going to have a series of interfaces on them. And ultimately, I'm going to need to be able to actually assign interfaces to respective users or to respective tenants, to use a better word, to use probably the more accurate word. And then what's going to end up happening is, is I'm going to need to be able to not only assign these interfaces, let's, so let's just say that I will come in here and I'll mark my interfaces, the interfaces that belong to me. I'm going to make those, let me see if I can get another set of pins here. I don't like those dusty colors. Let's go ahead and say that this interface this interface, this interface, and this interface belong to me. This interface, this interface, this interface, and this interface belong to me. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to take these interfaces and I want to connect these interfaces to network resources that are going to be in my administrative domain. Now what that implies is, is that I'm going to also need to govern how these interfaces are going to behave. As an example, I may need to be concerned with things like network speed. I may need to be concerned with whether or not I'm going to use CDP, whether or not I'm going to support LLDP, keeping in mind that LLDP is on by default and CDP is off by default, which is kind of odd since these are Cisco switches. But at the end of the day, these are all things that we're going to have to need to know how to implement, and we're going to have to look at how to implement everything from the perspective of implied and applied policy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the equipment and I'm going to set up an out of band configuration such that all of my devices, my leaf switches and my spine switches will be reachable via the OOB from a host. In fact, I'll use a jump box to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the domain name service so that it will be able to actually resolve the identity as, uh, identities of our virtual machine managers, our vCenter service that we have sitting out in the infrastructure. Then what we'll do is we'll configure an NTP protocol because it's going to be very, very important that these devices all have time synchronization taking place such that if I am going to use these certificates I know that everybody's going to have the same window but also keep in mind that if we have some type of event that takes place it's going to be very important to us to ensure that time is synchronized between the devices so that we can look at logs and we can look at other comparators that's going to be able to allow us to be able to look at and possibly perform some type of forensics on logs and enable to be able to determine whether or not things are actually happening the way or things how things actually transpired. The next thing is going to be the multi-protocol BGP configuration and that's going to be set up by creating a route reflector policy and what we're going to do is we're going to assign that route, route reflector policy. I will use a route reflector policy and I will create an autonomous system environment for BGP where I, I will use Autonomous System 100 in our lab. Now these configurations are normally performed on a fabric-wide basis therefore they're only normally performed once which is why I'm going through these in the demonstrations because in the class these configurations will all be baseline. So I want you to know how that, that's done and if you do want to explore these configurations on your own we'll try to get you into an ACI simulator or in the event that we need to like blow out the ACI that we're going to be using for the course of the class the actual physical ACI I'll try to select certain individuals to be able to repeat these processes and these tasks. So with that being said that's the lecture let's dive in and see if we can't do the implementation on the hardware. I'll see you guys there.